today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to take our draped basic bodice and turn it into a paper pattern. Hi friends, welcome back to Sew Obvious. I'm Volner. In our last two videos, we learned how to take some muslin fabric and drape it on our mannequin so that we can create a basic bodice pattern. Now we're going to take this fabric and actually turn it into a paper pattern. In order to do this, we are going to need our scissors, several rulers, and some sort of paper to transfer to. In school, we always use manila envelope type of paper, but I don't have access to that. So I usually get this craft paper that people use for packaging. It's actually pretty good. It is a great width to create patterns, and it's pretty cheap. This dirty foot roll is only like four or five dollars at home. So first and foremost, obviously, let's take our fabric off of the mannequin. When you are taking your fabric off the mannequin, check to see if you have any parts where you might have missed marking with a pen or a pencil. This is the perfect time to see where we're missing and then going ahead and filling it in. Here we have our two pieces. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to our work table so we can lay them out flat and make sure that we get these lines as clear as possible. Here I have my front bodice. The lines I have on here are actually not too bad, but I still want to go through with a marker or pen and draw the lines. Now because I'm using marker and the marker is a little bit thicker than the pen I originally used, I'm going to line up right up against the line and I'm going to draw on the inside of the pattern line so that I'm not actually cutting anything away. That's what we're going to do for the entire thing. Now for the hem, it's hard to see, but it's actually slightly curved. So we're going to be using this ruler. You can see it's got a slight curve. It's perfect for hems. So what you do is you just line it up as best as possible. As you can see, it almost perfectly lines up with that curve right there. And then same thing on this side. So now the only things I have left are the neckline and the armhole. Now those curves are a little bit more drastic. So we are going to use this very form curve ruler. As you can see, it starts out a little bit straight and gets more and more curved. A lot of the curves that we use in pattern making will fall somewhere on this ruler. You kinda just gotta move the ruler back and forth until it kinda fits. One thing you want to always do, especially on the center front line, is square it off. Otherwise, it's gonna create this weird little V notch at the neckline, and we don't want it. We want it to come across smoothly. There's the neckline. Now we're gonna turn it this way and find the curve, well, the best possible curve for the armhole. So here we have the fully outlined piece. Now we're going to do the same thing with the back bodice. Here we have both of the front and the back fully lined. Now, we have a choice to make. Choice depends on whether you have a specific tool or not. This is called a tracing wheel. It looks like one of those little wheels that cowboys have on the back of their boot. 
It is used to run over pieces of patterns, fabrics, and it kind of punctures through and leaves a little line that we can follow and cut along or draw along, that kind of thing. So, if you have a tracing wheel or you can get a tracing wheel, we are going to do that. If you can't, then what we're going to do is we are going to trim off all this extra fabric around the edge of the line that we just created. So, I'm going to do one of each. I'm going to do the front bodice by cutting it out. And I'm going to do the back bodice by tracing it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's cut out all the extra fabric that we don't need. Okay, so I have the front bodice cut out. Now, this is where we're gonna go get a crafting paper. So, because crafting paper comes in a roll, it is going to try and fight against you and not lay flat. Something you can do is iron it out, not for too long, and definitely do not use any steam. Now what we are going to do is we are going to lay our fabric down and we are going to go get a pencil or a pen. Now for this one, because we cut out all that extra fabric, we are going to mark any corners we have in our pattern, making sure we lay it out as flat as possible. We are basically going to outline the entire thing with our pencil. The only thing I recommend is crossing all your corners like that so that you know where those are. It makes it easier for us to have less mistakes. The center front has to be straight. So instead of tracing it, I recommend you put a ruler right on top of it and just use the ruler as a guide. So that we know it's straight. We also want to make sure that we transfer our grain line. So about an inch from the center seam, we are going to draw another line straight up and down. Put an arrow going up, arrow going down. That way we know that's our green line. Now it's always important to remember to label your piece. So we are going to put front basic bodice. Now if you made this bodice specifically for somebody, I would put their name there. If you made it for a specific mannequin, for example, the mannequin that I used is a size 16L. I'm just going to put 16L so I know the size. Now that we have this done, we are going to go all the way around and do a half inch seam allowance. So we're gonna line up the half inch line across. Now the side seam, half inch line. And that's why I said it's so important to knot your corners because even if this line here is a little bit crooked, 
as long as my corners are in place, when I put that seam allowance, you won't really notice it. Now for a curved line like this, what I do is I shift it a little bit at a time. And you see how these lines go straight across this way? I turn it until they're straight, about each half inch. And then I do a little notch right there. And as long as you're following that the majority of the time, your half inch seam allowance will be pretty spot on. Now, obviously, if you're a beginner, this is going to take you a little bit of time to figure out. If you look on YouTube, I'm sure there's a bunch of hacks, like that thing where you put the pencil or whatever. You're welcome to do that, but honestly, if you've got a ruler like this, there is no reason to bother. Now let's do the hem. The hem you're going to do exactly the same way as you did the armhole. Because even though the hem looks straight, it is not. It is slightly, slightly curved. And if we do a straight line across, it can make a difference to the way our fabric fits when we sew it. We're going to do the same thing for the neckline. The neckline is probably the most curved thing on here. Now, if you want to go over these dashed curved lines with a more solid line, you are more than welcome to do that. Now, for the dart right here, what we need to do is we are going to put this one inch mark right over the point. We're gonna put it, this part of the line, right in the middle of both. We're going to move the dart bus point to down here. We do that because if we leave it up here, when we sew it, it is going to create a really pointy boob on your garment. And you're gonna end up looking like Madonna, and that's really not in style right now. So we're gonna avoid that. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take this new point, connect it to the corner on the hem, and we're gonna draw a line to it. And that is going to become our new dart. So now that we have our new dart point, we are going to do our half inch seam allowance. And now that we got this drawn, we can go ahead and cut it out. However, I'm going to move on to the next part and show you how to transfer the back bodice for those of you who actually have a tracing wheel. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use our ruler to put our center back. Okay. Now that that's done, we're going to grab our tracing wheel and we're going to trace all the way around. With a tracing wheel, I recommend that you go back and forth like this to make sure that these little pokers go through and actually leave marks on your paper. Because if they don't, then there's no point to doing this. So 
So you can see right here, the little shadows of all the holes that it made. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do for this whole thing. Once you've traced all the way around with the tracing wheel, then you'll go through with your pencil and fill in those lines. Now that we got it all marked, we are going to do the same as the last one. We're going to draw our green line in from the center back. We are going to label it back basic bodice 16 out. And now we're going to add a half inch seam allowance to all sides except for the center back. Now, when it comes to the dart in the back bodice, some people do the same thing that they, we did in the front, which is lower it one inch. Some people leave it right where it is. Some people only lower it half an inch. I usually do about half an inch because even though it's not a big difference, it does help from keeping the fabric creating a weird little pucker or point in the back of the bodice. So again, we're gonna put this new point with our corner, new point to corner. And as you can see, it doesn't really make that much of a difference on paper but it could create a really big difference on fabric. And now that we have all our seam allowances, you can go ahead and cut out your, both your front and your back bodice. Next week, we are going to use both the front and the back bodice to create a full bodice for our mannequin and see if we need to make any alterations. If you like today's video, make sure that you like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. You can also follow me on Instagram on at a poly look. There I post some of my current projects and any videos that I might be posting on here. If you didn't like this video, that is perfectly fine. I still love you because you are allowed to have your own opinions, even if they're wrong. Okay, bye.